And we're here in the beautiful Tokyo Food Lab in Kyobashi, uh, which is our, our headquarters for Future Food Kyobashi Living Lab. Uh, so we're excited to, to bring an off, offline in part, but online uh, presentation to you guys. Uh, so we're, we're here today uh, in celebration for Sustainable Gastronomy Day. And I reached out uh, to Taichi to, to see if we could speak to him uh, about some of his initiatives that, that he's working on with uh, co-cooking and, and also the app and platform that uh, he created called Tabete. Uh, so, so thanks very much for, for being here with us uh, today. And if you could please give us a little bit of a background on, on, on co-cooking Tabete and some of what you guys are working on. All right, thank you, Chris. Thank you. So All right, so uh, hello, uh, thanks for having me here today. So uh, I'm from, I am from Co-Cooking. My name is Taichi Isaku, and we create an app called Tabete, uh, which is kind of an app that we are doing to fight the issue of food waste here in Japan. So uh, we are quite a, a young company. We started, we launched in 2015. Uh, we, we are a startup here in Japan, uh, but uh, so so uh, so I'm I'm one of the two co-founders of my com company. So uh, uh, let me just kind of first introduce uh, how our company came to form and how we uh, what kinds of events led to us uh, starting our. Uh, you have called Tabate. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, starting with our story, so uh, so uh, we were co-founders. So we we launched that in 2015, and back then we were in. Uh, we're right now we are based in Tokyo, but uh, at the time we weren't in Tokyo. We were uh, in a call a city called Yaman uh, Fuji Yoshida, mm -hmm. which which is kind of like the bad city. Uh, of uh, Mount Fuji, which is the largest mountain here in Japan. And so uh, back then we, we were kind of having, uh, we're, we were trying to kind of build a local community around the food, the kitchen, uh, the farm, that it's kind of built on the communication where people uh, kind of eat together, uh, cook together. Mm. <laughs> so uh, at, back then we weren't really a startup. Mm -hmm. So we were kind of using the kitchen as like a platform where people can uh, get to know each other more better or uh, kind of cook uh, together to enhance each other's creativity. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we've been wor working with food for a couple of years for now, uh, now but uh, food really is kind of a huge topic. It's not kind of uh, all fun and games. Mm -hmm. So, And actually, can, can I ask before, yeah, sure. before getting into to it. Um, so what, what kind of led, what spurred your interest in, in food and, uh, and, and what was kind of like, was there a any kind of background in food or, or what had kind of led yes. up to, to food? Yeah. So uh, both uh, myself and my uh, co-founder Cosmo, we, we mm -hmm. kind of have different backgrounds. So mm -hmm. Cosmo, uh, he was a chef. So he, uh, before uh, launching Coca-Cola, uh, he was working uh, both on the floor and in the kitchen of a uh, of a quite a quite, quite a lot of, a large restaurant. Mm -hmm. So he himself has been uh, kind of working on the business side mm -hmm. of food, especially with uh, how food uh, relates to business and uh, its consumers. Mm. And on the other hand, I was working. I was more. Uh, uh, I was uh, a researcher at my university mm -hmm. back then. So my research topic was how we can use kind of food as kind of an uh, educational tool to enhance people's creativity. Since uh, cooking is kind, kind of the most uh, daily form of creation that we can do mm. uh, in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking of like creating a program where people can cook together mm. to kind of enhance uh, their team creativity. Okay. okay. So, our interests for food kind of came together to kind of, uh, and we wanted to see how we can put our knowledge together to kind of uh, 
use food to uh, build the, the community around the kitchen. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So then um, we, we were we were working with food, but um, of course, uh, food food isn't uh, all the shiny uh, things. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, the fun okay. and the creative mm -hmm. uh, and the luxurious kind of uh, experience that food brings us. It's not. It's it's kind of one side of food. So there's always the other side of the food miss, missing, which is all connected to uh, how food how we can sustainably uh, feed our planet, how we can uh, continually uh, kind of get that luxurious experience as a, uh, as a consumer. So we, we kind of started noticing that uh, sustainability is a topic that we can't ignore mm -hmm. uh, in the course of dealing with food. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's when we were kind of approached by the slow food movements and and the Sofu Mumunet, it's actually uh, based in uh, the headquarters. It's actually in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the Japanese branch of the Sofu Mumunet kind of uh, approached us and we started kind of working to, to, together. Oh. So, and back then, uh, food waste was kind of the core topic mm -hmm. of, this, uh, of slow food Nippon. Mm -hmm. So we kind of started to get involved with. Uh, their initiative to kind of uh, raise awareness towards food waste in sure. Japan. Okay. So what we were doing was uh, was this event called Disco Soup, which is uh, quite held uh, all around the world, which uh, we go around to different producers at, and ask, ask them if they have any uh, produce left mm -hmm. that they can't sell in, on the market due to its like shape mm -hmm. or uh, it's too big, it's too small. Mm. And what we do is we collect participants and we kind of cook a soup together mm -hmm. with the, uh, the ugly vegetables okay. to kind of uh, send out the message about food. Okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, we, we've been doing this for like one or two years, but uh, so an event, it's it's kind of quite fun, but uh, to really, ch really change something, it, uh, it wasn't enough. Yeah. Uh, so people will uh, become aware of food waste maybe for that day, but then uh, they'll back, go back to their, to their normal, normal yeah. lives uh, yeah. the next day. Right. So that's when we were, we were started, started to think uh, we need more like a, a sustainable system where we can uh, systematically mm -hmm. reduce food waste in Japan. On an everyday kind yeah. of basis, yeah, meet people where they are somewhat, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the, the sustainability of food, uh, it can't uh, be like the goal itself, but yeah. it's, it has to be more embedded into our natural processes of our daily lives for real change to happen. Okay, yeah. So yeah. that's how we uh, that's how we started to think about our new business called uh, Tabete. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. So uh, so this was back in twenty seventeen. Uh, where we started to think about our new business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, now uh, we have this uh, application called Tabete, uh, and Tabete uh, quite literally uh, translates to uh, basically eat me. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, a mobile platform where we match surplus food at restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, pastry shops, bakeries, uh, with, with uh, consumers who are willing to eat the food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, food waste at restaurants, uh, there are many causes to it. Uh, for example, people will make reservations but never show up. Mm -hmm. uh, if, it, if it's like a, a, <clears throat> a buffet or a pastry shop, uh, weather is a big factor. If, it, if it's rain, raining, people are less likely to come to, come to the shop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <clears throat> so if you ever been to uh, one of the uh, bakeries or confectionery shops, you will see in the showcase uh, the it's always it's always full. Yeah, right. <laughs> so those shops cook the food uh, with uh, food waste incorporated into their model. Yeah, that's a 
bit of a skewed model. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. There are lots of reasons that food is being thrown out mm -hmm. uh, at restaurants and shops. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in mm -hmm. Japan, this is yeah. quite, I, I, it's, it's quite more skewed than uh, other European countries. Mm. So uh, in Japan, for most companies that have customers, they're uh, Top most priority is hospitality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, if you, uh, so whatever the customer wants, uh, the customer gets. Yeah. So, right. So, uh, so saving food from becoming waste often contrib contributes uh, what the consumers want. The mm -hmm. consumers always want uh, the wealthy choices. Mm -hmm. They always want to see. Uh, the amount of food in the showcases. Mm -hmm. yeah. Abundance. Abundance. Make it yes. look abundant and fully presentable, yes. kind of, right? So, especially with uh, vegetables, uh, a carrot has to be this inch long, uh, so many uh, centimeters yeah. this long. Uh, it has to be this shape. Yeah. And right. anything that doesn't fit the criteria, uh, the consumer would buy. Right. Mm. And it's considered part of the hospitality to kind of provide that kind of uh, choice mm. to the general to the consumers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the chicken and the egg. Uh, yeah. The consumers want one thing and, and the stores wants to kind of uh, uh, provide the thing. Uh, yeah, kind of meet, meet that demand. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and some carryover, not just from the food industry, yes. but from all industries that yes. I've seen here, this over servicing. Yes. And this, Customers first takes such a high priority yes. that that sometimes it it can backfire in, in a certain way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, food waste in general is quite a huge, com complicated problem in mm. general. But uh, the form foremost issue is that uh, if you live a normal life uh, in the city, you'll never see. How much food is actually being thrown out? Yeah. Uh, so, right. Yeah. So most of the food waste happens uh, in the backboards. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is, as a first step, mm -hmm. is is to kind of uh, kind of show or uh, reveal mm -hmm. that so much food is being wasted, right? And, and that's uh, the small demands that we make as a consumer is kind of contributing to that complex uh, problem. Right. Right. Uh, so, uh, so for a service, uh, we're basically a matching app. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, this uh, person at uh, a baker, she near the end of the day, she still has some bread left at our, at our store. So she can uh, post uh, how much uh, food is being left, uh, being kind of become prone to become waste, mm -hmm. and she'll set the pickup time and the price and then the, uh, our app users can kind of buy that food through the store uh through the app and they'll go pick up the food at the store at the uh, specified time. Mm. so they so the users do go yes they, so they pick up it, the, at the store right we're working yeah. on on the pickup mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> so i the model is quite uh, simple uh we, we take a, a 150 yen commission, which is roughly about a euro. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and we also donate a proportion of our sales to uh, uh, we call it a children's cafeteria. It's like a, uh, a public cafeteria for uh, children to kind of have a community meal. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. very cool. So for re for restaurants, uh, of course, they can uh, cut costs. So it it costs money. It costs quite costs quite a lot to mm -hmm. throw out uh, waste here, especially in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. So yeah. cutting food, uh, cutting waste kind of directly relates to, uh, connects to cleaning costs. Right. Plus they can kind of collect the, uh, the cost that uh, they paid to kind of buy the ingredients and pay for the people. Mm -hmm. So they can collect costs. <laughs> and also, uh, Recently, uh, people are trying to eat more uh, environmentally mm -hmm. friendly, mm -hmm. so they can kind of rebrand or position themselves as an eco-friendly store. Yeah, yeah. 
And finally, uh, through our app, uh, most most times, uh, people, it's the it's the user's first time uh, visiting the store. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, they will be discovered by new uh, customers, which which the customers might return to the store for uh, without at the app uh, on yeah. a different occasion. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Is it, has it been, I'm not sure if you'll get into this a little bit later, but has that been kind of a, a, a challenge, a battle to kind of convince uh, restaurants that actually from a marketing perspective, you could be tapping into a whole new uh, customer base? Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. What are some of the challenges kind of that, uh, the pushback you get from, from some restaurants? I, yeah. So the most, I, the biggest a pushback that we get is that they kind of uh, are worried about their brand. Yeah. So uh, in their usual uh, model, mm -hmm. many stores, especially the high-end uh, bakeries, mm -hmm. they don't like to provide discounts. Yeah. Uh, from a branding perspective. Right. Right. So, <clears throat> but uh, so uh, two years ago when we first started. Uh, and doing our sales, uh, it was quite hard to convince mm -hmm. uh, the shops, but it's been two years. Mm -hmm. and, and the issue of food waste, its awareness kind of rose at, in Japan at, in general. So yeah. recently, it's, uh, it has become uh, quite easy, easier to convince that uh, being on our, on our platform is doing, uh, actually doing more good for your brand. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys have any kind of um, like logos or labels or anything that you provide to the restaurant to, to kind of speak I, to the fact that they're... Yeah, that's, yeah. we do have uh, stickers that they, uh, we can source and put on their uh, cool. uh, storefronts mm -hmm. that uh, kind of appeals to consumers that, uh, yes, we are uh, working forward to, forward to reduce uh, waste at our store. Cool, cool. Got it. Yeah, so uh, for, rest, uh, for the restaurants, uh, there are many benefits, but also mm -hmm. for uh, the the consumers, the app users. Uh, yeah. So in most cases, the meal uh, is at a discount price. So uh, you can get a, a good deal on the meal, of course. But mm -hmm. also, uh, many of our users kind of return to the app because they want to kind of they are looking for eco-friendly options mm -hmm. to buy food. Mm -hmm. And I. Uh, and then there are a certain number of people, uh, users who want to discover new restaurants that uh, are trying to do those kind of kind yeah. of good. Yeah. Cool. So then uh, uh, it's good for the restaurant, it's good for the users, but uh, also we were trying to build a sustainable model for us as a company mm -hmm. to actually kind of grow as, uh, as a business mm -hmm. by uh, at least uh, gaining some profit through uh, the transactions. Right. But, yeah. but then all, by if all parties become, become happy, uh, we can still be uh, doing good for uh, the plan. Yeah, too. definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, f for example, uh, Bu Boulanger, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's a quite famous uh, pastry shop mm -hmm. uh, in Japan. Uh, there's a flagship store in the middle of Shinjuku mm -hmm. and also in Shibuya. And <clears throat> they joined us uh, almost a year or a year and a half ago. Cool. Uh, and since then, they uh, they always have a nearly a 100% matching rate. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And I just counted so delicious. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I just yeah. counted yesterday. And, and so uh, each package of, of bread that you buy through uh, Tabete, there's like five or six pieces of wow. bread. In. Yeah. So uh, that kind of calculates to over 50,000 oh pieces God. of bread rescued just through the tablet. Wow. Yeah. That is <laughs> awesome. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another example, uh, it's called the store's name. The store's name is called Merino. Mm. Uh, this is, uh, it's kind of a, a hot pot place where mm -hmm. it's an all you can eat place. Mm -hmm. And uh, they serve lamb meat. Yeah. And they usually buy the uh, lamb meat. As a block, and they slice the meat. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you go get towards the end of the block, uh, the slices kind of tend to get smaller. Okay. So before using our app, they just kind of uh, threw away all the edge pieces. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, they kind of 
embedded into their operation to save those piece, uh, edge pieces. Oh, and they okay. kind of uh, upcycle it into oh, like wow. a, uh, it's a Lambo. Yeah. That uh, they self rehabilitate and this Lambo, it's only only available through our Oh, wow, <laughs> that's cool. That's a, a, a way that the restaurant was able yes. to innovate to match. Yeah, yeah. to match, that, that's super cool. So uh, we are uh, as of uh, as of today we are uh, 26 months uh, yeah. into our launch. So we we officially launched in uh, April of 2018. Okay. So since then we have uh, 300 300,000 users hmm. and about uh, 1,200 stores. Wow. And uh, we rescued uh, 40,000 meals, which kind of calculates to about uh, 20 tons of food waste uh, rescued. Wow. And uh, 55.5 tons of carbon to uh, carbon dioxide emissions yeah. uh, reduced. That's great. And and sorry, we uh, tell us again. This is um, just in Tokyo for now, or, I, or in... so uh, we we operate in uh, right now. I think five or six cities oh. around, around Japan. Okay, but okay. I, about. 70% of sales is in Tokyo right Okay, now. okay. Yeah, so uh, we are... Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> so yeah. our main region is in Tokyo, but we are starting to uh, uh, launch in different cities around Japan. But And the way we do this is uh, we kind of form a government alliance with the local uh, government. Mm -hmm. So right now we are working with nine cities around Japan cool. uh, to kind of... Kind of, a, kind of Create a joint operation to reduce the food waste in their city. Mm. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to wrap up, we are so we are at the same time we we're both a startup and uh, a social uh, company. Mm -hmm. So sustainability is kind of our main keyword uh, through our business. And by sustainability, we mean uh, yes, we. Uh, are working for environmental sustainability, uh, sustainable food, but also we are uh, striving for uh, economic sustainability. Yeah, uh, we have to to do good. We have to kind of uh, continue to exist as right. a uh, as a for profit business. Right, right. And to do that, uh, the people inside our company has to be kind of keep mo uh, be motivated. Mm -hmm. So uh, the motivation of sustainability is mm -hmm. another keyword that we are. Uh, putting effort into as a company. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, wow. So uh, that is it for me. Okay, yep. okay, cool. Um, yeah, I think uh, we have just a few kind of uh, like follow-up questions and, yes, and maybe we can get, get into a little bit of uh, what COVID-19 has, <laughs> uh, has meant yes. for, for your business and for restaurants in Japan mm -hmm. as a whole. Certainly it's, this has been a total game changer or, or, or shift uh, as far as um, you know what what restaurants are doing or will be doing in the future. So so what are some of the transitions and the trends that you are seeing in terms of uh, the restaurant business here? Yeah. Uh, So COVID-19 did do a lot uh, yeah. to the world in general, but yeah. Japan too. Uh, mm -hmm. Japan was no exception. Yeah. So uh, restaurants are, were having uh, quite a tough, a tough time these couple of few months. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, like in many countries, there, there was a curf curfew in Japan too. Mm -hmm. But uh, one difference is that uh, stores were asked to voluntarily close. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there wasn't exactly, uh, it wasn't forced, but it was kind of forced. <laughs> kind of pressure yes. to do, do the right thing. Yes. Kind of, yeah. yeah. So uh, the stores and its employees have had to like, survive these couple of few months mm. uh, without any income or pay, yeah. uh, which led to uh, actually many stores to close permanently. Mm. So uh, the only, kind of the only way for restaurants to survive was to rely on uh, delivery uh, takeouts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So I, the curfew was picked up uh, at the beginning, uh, at the last week actually. So mm -hmm. this, this is the first first week uh, of normal operations. But mm -hmm. I, from what we've heard, uh, consumers aren't returning to the restaurants mm -hmm. as uh, they expected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, tough times are still continuing. Yeah. And there, there are government aids, but it's kind of slow and uh, confusing. Yeah, right. <laughs> Kind of a lot of red tape to to yes. go through in order to get the government aid i guess yeah so mm -hmm. stores are kind of a way of uh, going back and forth between uh, should they close uh to uh comply with public safety or should right. they open the restaurants to and kind of put their employees in uh, at risk yeah uh, yeah but still get the money for it right right and still uh through all these times, uh, rent is a big issue. Mm -hmm. It's still he uh, heavily in mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, misinformation is also uh, quite an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, people, uh, people on Twitter, on Twitter might say, uh, hey, that restaurant, uh, I heard that uh, they had uh, the, the, an employee mm -hmm. from that restaurant uh, actually got caught the virus, mm -hmm. um, which may or may not be true. Yeah. But still, people won't will avoid going to the store anyway. Right, yeah, yeah. Mm. So right, right now, many uh, shops are shifting towards uh, takeouts and delivery, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, uh, in general, uh, it's quite tough to make up for uh, the profit that they, they used to make from this uh, seeking-based uh, business model. Mm -hmm. So uh, things are quite tough for all restaurants right now. Yeah, yeah. And, and then what have some of the changes that you guys have seen in terms of the I, uh, in terms of the business like um, with with pretty much all restaurants at least for a little while shifting to take out only models yeah um, yeah if you can kind of speak to some of how that affected uh, the as well. yeah yeah so I so we, we are kind of seeing a general shift in the business model of restaurants. Mm -hmm. So uh, first of all, uh, many restaurants are kind of trying to diversify their income. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, there are many restaurants that uh, kind of uh, are selling meal kits, right? Yeah. Where uh, pe uh, where people can kind of cook the, st uh, the store's specialty meals mm -hmm. at their home. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also uh, another trend we're seeing is that, uh, especially the high-end restaurants, uh, they're kind of providing uh, cooking workshops and mm. online cooking classes mm. where the chef will uh, kind of watch people cook over a Zoom meeting mm. and kind of give advice at point where, when, they, when it's needed. Mm -hmm. And another example is that uh, we, we see restaurants kind of selling their uh, recipes mm -hmm. that, uh, I, that uh, they provide at their stores. Mm -hmm. Some even uh, are kind of uh, providing the recipes for free Right, where, and then they're hoping for uh, the loyal consumers to come back uh, once they're ready. Yeah, uh, got it. So, uh, in general, we are seeing a surge in numbers. Uh, as uh, so, Tabate in general is kind of a, a, a kind of a, a takeout app. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing numbers surge. Right. So, uh, mm -hmm. so these are our numbers for the past few months. So. Oh, okay. Uh, the number of meals posted on our, meal, uh, on our service kind of tripled uh, mm. in the past uh, few months. And the meals rescue, uh, the numbers also uh, kind of doubled to triple. Okay. So yeah. we're seeing uh, serious demands on both the shop side and for the consumer side. Okay. So with people saying more at, uh, at home, they are, yes, they are cooking more, but they, they're kind of becoming tired of uh, home cooking. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the need for takeouts is kind of uh, on the rise. Yeah, yeah. Would there, I kind of, the question that pops pops up, would there be any way to, um, I guess, work with like retail shops or, or grocery shops with, with Tabete? I mean, I know a lot of the shops do this already on their own where, where they'll like set aside the produce yes. that's about to expire. 
um, and set it on a different like rack. But is have you guys thought about or approached uh, I, grocery we, channels in a way to? We, we are actually in talks with uh, a couple of uh, supermarkets. Okay, yeah. So I so not the produce itself, but uh, many. Uh, yeah. Uh, many supermarkets here in Japan sell like uh, uh, bento boxes mm -hmm. or uh, kind of small appetizers yeah. for, uh, for customers to uh, take home. Right. And, and those kind of tend to get uh, become wasted too. So we're trying to work with restaurants, uh, with supermarkets to uh, put those items on our mm -hmm. service too. Right? Cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, were there any other points about about um, COVID nineteen kind of related? Um, so, yeah, or I can. Yeah, I, I, I had a few questions that I that yeah. I had kind of uh, written, about. but yeah, like the for example, the, the long term effects yeah. on on consumer behavior. So yeah. uh, this is data I think from the U.S., mm -hmm. but uh, in general, uh, consumer habits uh, or consumers. Uh, uh, behavior or attitudes towards mm -hmm. restaurants are uh, changing. So, for example, this one study from the U.S. said, said that uh, at, at least 59% uh, of people will, uh, or 67% uh, 60, of people will kind of uh, be cautious when yeah. they dine out, even after uh, the virus right. ends. Right. And 12% even said they never said that they may never eat wild wow. tank. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. So the attitudes are quite yeah. quite strong. Yeah. And do you do you kind of expect some of the same trends uh, for, uh, for Japan? Or? So we don't have uh, like specific data yeah. right now, but as a as a general trend I think yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and are there any other kind of implications that uh, I, that this is going to have you think on, on Restaurants or the food service business. Uh, so uh, right now we are uh, one week into uh, the curfew being picked up, yeah. and uh, and we're seeing uh, quite a few articles about uh, the situations of restaurants mm -hmm. and. Uh, we're seeing kind of a split, or it's kind of dispersed mm -hmm. into uh, two sides. Where uh, there's a big group of people who are trying to go back to the normal lives before the coronavirus, mm -hmm. and they're trying to eat out as general, mm -hmm. and they don't mind so much about social distancing mm -hmm. or uh, eating as a group. Mm -hmm. But then uh, there's another group that. Uh, which maybe fits into the 12% mm. of people uh, not trying to dine out in mm -hmm. and we're seeing kind of this friction between the two groups yeah and, and the restaurants are kind of being pulled apart between the two sides yeah and we're still seeing how this is going to turn out over the next few weeks right mm. Got it. Mm. yeah um okay and it kind of, it kind of reminds me it, you can almost see like a trend happening where many restaurants are going to to, to turn into kind of deliver mainly delivery yeah. based, um, which which you know could be a, a you know obviously a, a, a real cultural loss and mm -hmm. a real kind of negative in terms of uh, community building mm -hmm. and but uh, on the other hand this is this interestingly enough like the the founding of co-cooking was kind of like meant to also uh bring people together around food so it's actually kind of a unique thing like trend that's happening and and um i don't want to say you guys are like well positioned because that sounds opportunistic <laughs> but but no i mean w the services you're providing are very relevant both on yes. the habite side and co-cooking mm -hmm. as we are still going to need a sense of community and mm -hmm. um people cooking together and being together and talking about food together. Yes. If it's going to happen less in restaurants, maybe it, it, it can happen in, you know, the third space. Mm -hmm. Like, so that that's kind of an, an interesting take that might, that might bring, you know. Kind of, so uh, as a trend, we are, so uh, uh, 
uh, I talked a lot with, uh, with uh, my friends who, who are also founders of a uh, food startup mm-hmm. in Japan, and they, uh, and, and they do more of a, like a farm to table kind of business. So, yeah. And from what, what I've heard, uh, uh, more people are buying uh, directly from producers right now. Mm-hmm. So uh, home cooking, uh, cooking especially with family, yeah. is uh, on the rise, which is, uh, which is kind of happy for us too. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. But then uh, also for restaurants, uh, we're kind of seeing a shift towards uh, the community as well. Yeah, so, uh, got it. So uh, we do have some implications for how restaurants might change after uh, the coronavirus. Mm. So, so yes, uh, we saw many shops uh, close permanently, mm-hmm. uh, but I, the, in the Japanese restaurant or food service industry is quite unique mm-hmm. in that uh, we have too many restaurants. Yeah, so there, there are a for, lot. Yeah. yeah. So for about a thousand people, uh, Tokyo has 6.2 restaurants, which compared to in New York, which is uh, 1.4 shops. Oh, okay. So wow. uh, we do have a quite a high competition. Yeah. So, so, uh, so that's the high competition actually, actually led to, uh, for us as a consumer to be able to buy or eat good food at quite a uh, cheap price. Mm-hmm. So in Tokyo, it's quite rare that you pay more than uh, 10 bucks for, mm-hmm. for lunch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you will rare, rarely be disappointed with the quality of meal. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, consumers are quite uh, being quite spoiled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. But uh, so after the coronavirus with, and with the people, uh, the, all the business people, they kind of left the cities for a couple of months. Mm. And uh, looking at the restaurants that survived and, did, at, and the ones that didn't, uh, one trend that we see is that restaurants that had a community mm-hmm. uh, that supported them mm. um, were more, more likely to survive. Yeah. So, right. uh, I. So uh, restaurants that where it's staff and the just uh, the customers they who knew each other face to face right yeah and those kinds of restaurants uh, people still even if it was uh, away from your homes mm-hmm. they start still try to support them yeah uh, they will come back to the restaurants after they open yeah uh, there is a community of, pe- of people who will be sad yeah uh, if the store closes permanently so yeah those kinds of shops are are likely to survive. So where, where customers feel kind of more of an emotional or personal mm-hmm. tie to or connection to yeah. the, the restaurant or the owners or some of the staff yes. there or the food itself. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Got it. So in, in general, uh, eating out is becoming uh, kind of a luxurious mm-hmm. or kind of a special event than before. Yeah. So uh, each occasion of eating out will become more special for the consumer, which mm. means that they'll uh, kind of consider their choices more. Mm. So uh, from uh, restaurants from now on would need like a special reason for the consumers to come eat at that specific store. Yeah. It might be because of uh, the, <clears throat> uh, because of the people, it might be because of the special day dish. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it can be anything, but it, they would need that special reason from now on. Right. Something to stand out a bit yes. more than, than beforehand, right? Okay, okay. Um, so, and we, I think we have like a, just a few more yeah. minutes left to go. Um, but I kind of wanted to ask, like, well, actually, I had a, a, another question. I don't, I don't know if you had any more information in terms of this on like um, from from like the farmer, like farmers and other food producers um, that that you've kind of heard from in, in terms of. Uh, how soon oh, yeah. is that? <laughs> yeah. So uh, these couple of few months, uh, restaurants were closed, uh, and another uh, big factor was that uh, school cafeterias. Yeah. They were closed. Right. So all the uh, the produce that were that were supposed to uh, feed the kids at school, uh, the the people at working at companies that, that have cafeterias, mm-hmm. uh, 
all their all their orders got canceled. Right. So we had quite a ton of food becoming uh, from becoming waste. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I, uh, so uh, we saw uh, different uh, like uh, special uh, websites where people can buy those kinds of leftover yeah uh, produce right from those food service companies yeah. that normally service schools yes. yeah I remember mm -hmm. remember seeing seeing something about that too that was a good a good innovation to kind of yeah come come about um, okay. And, and then I guess I was going to quickly touch on the, the topic of uh, like food packaging, perhaps, which oh, yeah. is, a, <laughs> which is uh, can be a troublesome topic yes. uh, in Japan and elsewhere. But, but, but oftentimes in Japan, you see um, being in the business of takeaway food um, and knowing that and acknowledging that like that's not going anywhere anytime soon. People who are we're probably still going to continue eating, eating takeaway food. Um, I guess like, what are some of the, or, or how, how are you guys at Tabete approaching the topic of, of sustainable, uh, sustainable <laughs> packaging? Maybe? So before uh, COVID-19 hit, uh, was, the trend was that uh, the less packaging, the better. Yeah. So, uh, but then uh, everything changed with the virus. <laughs> right. So, uh, so at Tabete, we do provide a, uh, more green options for uh, takeout uh, boxes. So we do provide, uh, well, we, we do sell kind of uh, uh, biodegradable boxes that okay. uh, shops can use to uh, provide their food. Yeah. But now, uh, in, in general right now, uh, so before it was, uh, the trend was more uh, waving towards more uh, less plastic, less packaging. That's, mm -hmm. It's kind of going backwards. Right. And now it's kind of, uh, going back and forth between uh, com uh, restaurants and companies that want to provide uh, food, that prioritize mm -hmm. food safety and uh, actually use more plastic and yeah. those, those trying to continually uh, strive for sustainability through uh, greener package options. And, yeah. uh, for us, I, I think both options are reasonable. Yeah. Uh, the the main point is uh, that it, it's up to the consumers uh, to uh, so it, it's up to the consumers to decide what bit what best fits their yeah. values. Right. So uh, we're completely okay with uh, people who value food safety the most and kind of want to move a plastic packaging. Yeah, yeah. But we still do uh, are trying to work for look for solutions to kind of balance all the two. Right. Right. Okay. And offering that option on the app is, is a really good kind of step. And, and maybe outside of like post COVID context that it could um, help to, I think probably lead more, uh, more restaurants to see and take note of, you know, the, the growing consumer demand for, for, for cleaner uh, packaging. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I think that might be close to, um, we, did, we didn't, there were a few questions we didn't get to, but uh, all the more reason that we'll need to, to have another discussion uh, or, an, or an event of some sort offline or online. Yeah, so, but thank you very much well, for, thank you for, for, for being with us. Yes. Yeah, and again, uh, Taichi Saku, uh, and I'm Chris Krauss, uh, and we're here from Tokyo Food Lab. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we hope, hope you enjoyed the discussion. Thank you. Thanks very much.